and since we already built the mesh here it's just going to compute results if we hadn't done the mesh yet um, it would actually compute the mesh now um, and what we end up with is the stress analysis results um, now by default um, the system actually scales the results here I'm going to go and put normally the default looks like this um, where the um, results are adjusted or essentially scaled so that you can actually see a very large change so you can actually visualize or better visualize where the changes and problems would occur if you increase to a 5 you can actually see it jumps out really pretty obnoxiously uh, but if you jump back to actual you can actually see what the actual deformation and stresses are um, comes in handy if, if it's only a minor change to actually get the scaling so you can see where things are taking place. Um, some nice things to call out um, here. We're looking at the Von Mises stress um, on the toolbar. We actually have, and right now because I'm in only a 1024 by 768, um, it, I don't see the um, labels, but in a larger resolution you actually get labels for all of these buttons. But there's actually toggles here where we can see if we want to quickly see where the maximum stress is we can click that that toggle and it actually puts a pointer right to where the maximum stress is here okay there's also one for minimum which is actually let me zoom back out there's the minimum in here um, but if you wanted to pick your own locations you could do that as well um, with a probe and that's what these are actually probes so if within this green area here we could go ahead and place a probe and it will actually show you the results um, along with that we can actually go to animate this and actually see the, the how the stresses are applied throughout the range uh, of the analysis so you can actually see how much it's deforming here and you can see where the stresses are being applied and you can also see all these probes updating dynamically so you can actually read how those stresses are being applied throughout the the animation um, so last but not least let's look over here in the browser we've got in the results area we've got the the von Mises stress we've got uh, first and third principle stresses uh, we also have displacement you can obviously see here's the the largest displacement is right here at the end uh, and also safety factor now in this case I wanted to look at this because here I can see the safety factor is actually below one which is bad it means um, that the material will not handle the stresses that we've applied uh, or the forces that we've applied uh, to the the part um, so one of the nice things about the way the simulation environment is set up in inventor is I can actually look at some results and make decisions and adjustments on the fly so now here in the browser you can see simulation one I'm gonna actually right click on that and I can copy the simulation so you can actually have multiple simulations in the same environment and we can choose to uh, or when we copy that it essentially brings through everything it's a, an exact duplicate um, the same constraints same loads um, but what's important for that is we've run that simulation on simulation one um, and here in simulation 2 we're going to actually expand the, the part model uh, in the browser and one of the ways that we could uh, look to get that safety factor above a 1 is potentially removing this pocket which will make the part heavier um, these pockets were really just added to reduce weight um, but we could remove that which should make it stronger but it also makes it way more so what we can do is in the browser go ahead and exclude that extrusion from the simulation and just like suppressing a part or suppressing a feature in the part model it also suppresses its dependent features as well um, so with that suppressed we can go ahead and rerun the simulation and here you're going to actually see it's computing the mesh because it changed the model uh, so it's regenerating the mesh and then it's going to um, also run and generate the results too okay so now it's done that and here we can jump down to our safety factor in the second simulation and you can see that now our minimum safety factor is 1.06 so really by removing that suppressing that or removing that component 
uh, or that pocket, we've actually increased the safety factor to above one, which means now um, essentially the, the, the part will just barely handle the stresses and forces that we've applied to the part. Um, so you can see in Inventor it's a nice, easy, um, uh, simple way to you know, run a test, evaluate the results, and then make changes and reevaluate those very quickly uh, in the stress analysis environment. So um, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this basic FEA compo component of the demo um, and we'll switch back over to begin setting up the dynamic simulation and then we'll rerun a, a more advanced uh, stress analysis after that. Thanks. Hi, my name is John Helfen and I am an Education Solution Specialist with Autodesk. And today I wanted to provide an overview of the dynamic simulation environment. Um, this is actually step two in a three-part series. Uh, the first step was uh, a basic FEA uh, component. This simula we're gonna, in this session, we'll walk through setting up a dynamic simulation that exports motion loads to FEA. And then we'll follow up with a third demonstration that shows how to load those motion loads into the FEA system to complete your analysis. So as an overview, this project is um, a trebuchet that historically is a wooden structure, um, but I've chosen to modernize it um, in Inventor for this demonstration. Um, so to, to get started, I'm going to um, enter the dynamic simulation environment. And you can find that on the environments tab on the far left there's a dynamic simulation option and that actually will change uh, you know turn on the dynamic simulation tab here and convert the user interface to show the tools that are used in this environment uh, very similar to the way sketch and assembly work as well um, inventor automatically sets the tooling or the tools up uh, to accomplish the task at hand um, 